Welcome to Rewind the Movie. So as um, Indiana Jones, the fifth installment is out this week, we decided to go back and revisit the fourth installment because we'd already done the first three anyway. And although this is probably a little bit later than what we would normally do, um, what's this, 2008? Um, yeah, we're going back to the Crystal Skull. Um, and ever seen the, the newer one, so it'll be interesting to get his thoughts. I don't know if JP has seen it yet. I got him with his fancy cup. Um, I thought I thought it was a black dildo to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the uh, it's the new trend in fedora butt plugs. That's what it is. <laughs> um, yeah, so I remember watching the Crystal Skull. I think I went to the cinema to see it, and I wasn't impressed with it at all when I first saw it. I came away hating the film, and um, so. Last night was the first time I'd seen it since that day. So what's that? 15 years later. And we, we'll come on to it in a moment, but I've mellowed slightly on it. And we've had previous conversations in the other podcast as well. And I think, Prog, um, I remember you brought up a topic uh, on it, and I said what I didn't like about it was the alien aspect. And we had a whole conversation, which we'll probably go into again this time. Um, and like how... I, I was accepting of like religion and the supernatural element of that, but I wasn't necessarily like um, accepting of the 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 alien aspect of it. But anyway, like yeah. I said, we get and into that. I and I, my main point was which one sounds more believable right now, <laughs> given everything. That's going on. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, I've mellowed slightly on the film. Um, I watched it, like I said, last night, or maybe the night before, whenever it was, and I tried to see it for what it was trying to be and what it is, and that's an indie film. Hmm. A Janet Jones film, not an independent film, obviously. Um, so, yeah, over to you, you guys. Prog, when did you watch it, and what were your initial thoughts on it? Uh, well, I, did, I didn't go to the cinema to watch it. I waited until it came out. But I did watch it as soon as I could. Um, do you know what? I think I... Do you remember uh, Love Film? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you, you used to used to have the... used to order... A, used to put a list and they would send yeah. you the DVDs or Blu-rays when they had them in, in check or stored in there. And you could have five at a time, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I'm pretty sure this was uh, one of those. And... Um, I think when I first watched it, I was conflicted. I was like, I wanted to watch, I wanted to like it so much, but I almost couldn't because of what I thought was wrong with the film. Uh, but I have actually rewatched this film a couple of times since, um, and I've watched it. I've rewatched it twice, and I've watched it half the way through once because I was meant to be going out. And as you boys might be aware, when you're waiting for your partner to get ready, um, they take a little bit longer sometimes, don't they? So you end up watching an hour and 20 minutes of a film when you were supposed to go out when the film started. Anyway, uh, that might be one of the reasons why I'm not with a, a partner anymore. Uh, but I ended up watching half the film. And every time I've rewatched it, I've actually liked the film more. When I've rewatched it, that's not that they say there aren't still problems, and that's not to say I'm still going to recommend the film. We'll have to wait till the end for that. But all I'm saying is, is that I don't think this film is anywhere near as bad as a lot of people make out it is. Oh, yeah, it, it was going to be my point that we'll come on to. I think I jumped on the bandwagon of people not liking it um, for various reasons. But uh, yeah, what about you, Ev? Did you watch it? On, sorry, sorry Ev, before before you go into go it, on. can I just can I just say I think there's one element in particular that doesn't help this feel like a true indie film, and it's the special effects. Uh, yeah, we come on to the special effects. Yeah, specifically on, the jungle, sorry, jungle scene. Um, yeah, we'll come on to that bit. I'm sure at some point. No, um. I'd, um... I think I went to the cinema to watch this first off, and like you, I was just like, "What is this? This is it's it, it." It was almost 
it was almost as bad as when I when I watched the the, the Ghostbusters answer the call thing. I just thought they oh they've shat on the whole franchise big style. I was you know throwing me toys out the pram. I was like, oh. um, but I watched it today earlier today, and I, it's yeah it's not as bad as um as I thought. To be honest, it was it granted it's not a patch on the on the original three, but it's not it it's nowhere near as bad as what I first thought. And um, even like. Even the action sequences. I mean, how how old was he at the time? Was he he was six? Was he sixty five? Sixty three, sixty five, yeah, something like that. Yeah, he's, um, he's built in it. No, there's one scene. Yeah. Maybe he hasn't got a top on, or he's got he's showing his arms, and he's yeah. like proper built. There's a scene where they're washing him down after the after the nuclear explosion, and they it might be that one yeah. then. Yeah. yeah, and he's. He's in decent nick for a hey, 60 year old. He's in better nick than I am. <laughs> and at that point, he's got 20 years of me. Yeah. Probably, probably better nick than now. And he's got 40 years of me. Well, it, it's there's um there's a scene because obviously I was getting this from the I went to see the new one last night. And um there's a scene there's a topless scene in that as well. And even at bloody eighties, oh, he's ah. he's like an Adonis compared to compared to me. Oh. When you got, when you said a topless scene, then I got a bit excited for you. Meant like eighties boobs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. Yeah, his his eighties boobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah different type of <laughs> 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 oh, right. Come on, let, let's. I, I, there's some things that I'm gonna say about this film a little bit later with my changes, but I do want to like focus on some of the good aspects of it. And I again, like I said, I've only seen it twice, fifteen years apart. But I started watching it um, whenever it was last night, night before, and the bit that I t- didn't take up from the first time, but I meant I um, thought of it this time. But I think the score is really good. It's John Williams anyway, but it brought me back watching it, and um, yeah, it, it it was it was really good aspect of it. It just I had that little. Fuzzy sort of indie feeling, if that makes any sense. You know, when you what you you just brought me back, and I wish I'd had it the first time round. I, I I wonder if did I maybe read an um a couple of reviews beforehand, or did I do something and go into that film knowing that some people had slated it, and maybe that's why I didn't give it a fair ride. I I but I think it's important that we discuss why we thought or why we think it doesn't feel like an indie film. And I think the look of the film, there's a particular sheen, and this is specific to Spielberg, and he's had it for he had it for about ten years ever since he did Minority Report. Do you know you know that like mm-hmm. a sort of shimmer? Yeah, the, but there's the a bit of like a glare, like a um, yeah. I it's not as bad, but. Did you ever see the new Star Trek movies with Chris Pine? That I'd like. It's yeah, called. It's, yeah. Is it called a Solar Glare or something like that? It's not as bad called, as that. I'm not saying. But, Len- yeah, yeah, that's it. But it's um, I know what you mean. There's a certain look, and it looks a little bit too. Is it polished? Polished? Yeah, maybe. I know what you um, mean. They have, you the, they have exactly, grittier. Yeah, they they have that effect. Um, Sort of in abundance in the War of the Worlds remake with Tom Cruise. That yes. that if you that if you it, in particular the scene where where the tripods coming out of the coming out of the street, that whole that whole scene there. That's yeah, that's that's, that's a great bang, text right. in the filmmaker. You know, I, what I will say is right. But I haven't got a problem with like say Minority Report and War of the Worlds, those are two films where the, the lens flare and, and, the sh- and the sheen of the film uh, is you know paramount, uh, different to what Spielberg did before. I think because the first three indie films were so practical, like everything was done in camera, apart obviously from the ending of... We just lost that. That's the one Ray does, yeah. Um, but you, I think that's why when you watch this film, because it looks different, you're automatically like on the back foot with it being an indie film. It's not supposed to look that way. I want an indie film that looks like what it did in the eighties, yeah. and and I think it's it's almost like several diff, little differences make you think that 
yes, it's an indie film, but it doesn't feel like I'm watching an indie film. So if we take the aliens as an example, right? The aliens are the plot of this film or the crystal skulls. When you think about it, right? All of the indie films are something in the magical realm or, you know, uh, you know, something that not the norm, you know, the supernatural. So in all honesty, aliens shouldn't be that much of a stretch compared to uh, a magic cup or an arc that kills all bad things, right? Uh I, I, I think, think go on. So I, I was just gonna, I just want to jump in. I think the issue I had with it, the other films had been religious, even Temple of Doom to a certain degree. And then it was just this jump to it being this. That's what I was going to say. I was going to say, I think the difference is though, because everything beforehand was religious based and this is out of space or, you know, interdimensional. You so it's not space, yeah. man, it's interdimensional. Yeah. Which I didn't pick up the first time. It was only this time watching it. So what 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 do you think would have been better? I mean, you know, if we spit all ideas, would it have been better if he'd gone after the I don't know, what was Arthur what was King Arthur's sword? Excalibur. Oh, Excalibur. Yeah. yeah, would it have been better if he had what would it have been better if they had an Excalibur storyline or you know, there's only so so many things that they can do. I I I think what they did with this is because they set it in the fifties. They were like, well, what's prominent in the fifties? And I think it was the UFO craze, wasn't it? Yeah. It re- after after Roswell, Roswell, New Mexico, it really took off in the fifties with sightings and and uh, um, uh, taking taking people on board ships and so on. So I think they just went with what was prominent in America at that time. And to me, that makes it makes sense when you look about it that way, but again, it's another element that makes it feel that it's not a proper indie film. The, the storyline around interdimensional aliens was something that Lucas toyed with for a young Indiana Jones Chronicles episode, but it was never okay. used. So it's um, you know, and uh, no doubt when you, you know these guys have created these universes. You know, whether it be Star Wars, whether it be Indiana Jones, so no doubt, you know, they they've got like probably reams of like ideas of where they wanted to go with some of these. Yeah. Um, and I've mellowed, like as I said, on the idea of the aliens. It's it's not, yeah, that's not the worst thing in the film for me. Well, let me ask you this, right? Even though the film's about aliens, there's not a lot of aliens in it. No, it's only the end bit. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, you see the alien body when they're at that camp in the jungle but even even the way that's filmed it's quite to me that felt like an indie film that scene yeah. because of the way it's shot and it's almost like it doesn't like it's, it's not like looming over the alien like here yeah, we got an alien in the film it's almost like shows you the alien and then it's off and it's about the character the interactions again so mm. yeah it's only the ending when they're in the the uh, the mexican pyramid that it, it goes a little bit, well, you could say it goes a little bit too far, but in terms of the plot or what the plot's supposed to be and how they've laid it out, it does make sense to the plot and where yeah, it's supposed yeah. to go so much. Like I said, I've mellowed on that aspect. There's a, <laughs> yeah, there's definitely other things that, that, that brought up. In it. But I, I, I'm glad you mentioned it now because you are right. The alien aspect is very little in the film anyway. And there's that one scene where they talk about how they bandage babies' heads and kids' heads to give them an elongated skull. So, you know, it's sort of like trying to... Um, it's sort of work in the folklore. Yeah, and also but, and also justification for why that yeah, skull is like it also, is. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're trying to give some sort of um, plausible alternative to whether it is an alien skull or whether it's a human skull and it's just been forced elongation of the skull. Yeah. I wonder if you can do that with other parts of the body. Well, you can do it with your neck, can't you? You know, you see the people yeah. who have the rings around their necks? Yeah, yeah. I always wondered, if they ever take then those off, do their heads just like a, like bobbleheads? Just like lean over to one side. <laughs> oh! 
Well, and the other one is your year lobes, you know, people... Yeah, but hang on, hang on a minute now. I don't think they can ever get those off, can they? I don't know. Surely they must be able to. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm going to Google it later to see if there's a picture of someone without them on. How do, how do they get them on? Should, should, they, yeah. should they have to clasp at the back or something? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Right, come on. What else have people got? Favourite aspects? Arts. Oh, go on. What yeah, yeah, was that? Harrison Ford. Yeah. I'm going to say it now. I think Harrison Ford might be the greatest movie star of all time. Oof. He's, he's got oh. some, of the, some of the biggest franchises. I'll give him that much. I, I think Harrison Ford is underrated as an act, act, as an actual actor. I, th- I think Harrison Ford can seem effortless when he's delivering dialogue or certain looks or, you know, like the, you know the little moments that, I, well, personally, that I think make an actor one of the better actors. I think Harrison Ford nails the majority of those that he gets in. Not, not, just this film, but like all other films. There was a moment in Crystal Skull. I, I only noticed it this time watching it because we hadn't lo- we hadn't long watched um Last Crusade. And there's a line and the delivery of the line where Harrison Ford says exactly the same thing as his father said in Last Crusade, and Harrison Ford says it the way that Sean Connery said it in the film as well. And it's when he's talking to Shia LaBeouf's character, who eventually turns out to be his son. And I just, I found that really interesting and actually quite poignant as well, because obviously you'd love to see Sean Connery in the film again. But Well, funnily enough, him and Salah were offered roles in the film. But oh, Sean right. Connery at this point had retired and he, he didn't fancy it. And I think both him and Salah, though, did, did say that, not Salah, what's his name? Reece, John Reese, John Reese, 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 Reese. Yeah, he, he. They said that the roles weren't big enough and to do the character justice, so they didn't want to just come back for a cameo. Yeah, I think Sean Connery said this would have been the only film he would have come back for. Apparently, in it, I think. I'm not sure if but, if they had written a better part for him. I mean, although we did have a slight cameo from Marcus, admittedly in portrait form, but yeah. that was a well, little, ha- under, Sean under Connery's on his desk as well, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, they, they have um, they have a few sort of nods to to Marcus in particular because obviously there's the painting on the on the corridor in the in the college, and then there's obviously the the photo on his desk, and then the statue um, outside as well. So that was the moment, Dev. You just reminded me. Thank you. Do you know when Shia LaBeouf runs the bike into the statue and the head falls onto the lap? Yeah. Oh Shia, yeah. They, yeah. Shia, Shia LaBeouf is laughing. Harrison Ford looks at Shia LaBeouf the way Sean Connery looked at Harrison Ford after Harrison Ford had jammed that uh, flagpole into the Nazi uh, bike to send it spinning. And Harrison Ford laughs and Sean Connery gives him the disapproving look. I would love those little touches in films, see. Shall we move on to favourite scene? Unless anyone's got another burning oh, favourite. I haven't, even, I haven't even done mine. Yes. Whoa. On, <laughs> Whoa. Well, I thought you um, might have had Harrison Ford. No, no, it's a prog prog nipped in there. He, he went straight in with a big one. Um, no, I I I quite liked the I don't know the nostalgic touches like the like the old credits at the start, like the old Paramount logo and um the type the the typeface of um where when there's when it's the the opening credits and stuff is the same as the Last Crusade and all that, um, and um, the yeah the 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 red dot and the line going like on the map yeah you always look for you always look for that in, a, yeah, in an yeah. indie film it wouldn't be an but, indie um, film without it I know Do you see and how then, far down they had to go and then to come back up this way it was like there there and then it was all the way over there. It was like it was almost like why that line that they went down was almost the same distance if they'd gone that way. <laughs> Just wanted to sleep, didn't he? Um, yeah. But I, I quite liked. It. There's there was one there was one sort of shot in particular where right at the start where they where they pull them out the car and, they, and it's it's like a nice little light and shadow effect on the car door 
when he when he puts the hat on and you hear like the theme music in the background i thought oh you know it was uh it was, it was quite nice that and uh and for those neighbors fans jim robinson as, gen- yeah, as the yeah. general yeah and the janitor from scrubs Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah at the beginning, right? He's not only the janitor in Scrubs, Scrubs. He's also the policeman in the Fugitive in the in the subway. <laughs> I does. only remember that because there is a Scrubs episode about that, saying that the janitor—I can't remember his name. I think it's just janitor. Um, he um, yeah, they 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 see him in the the Fugitive film in in while well, in Scrubs, if that makes any sense. Um, and yeah, they try to like piece together his life. So, wow. Um, I got another cameo. You were you probably wouldn't have seen it unless you knew about it. Do you know in the um in the cafe near the beginning of the film where Matt is talking to Indy about um everything that's going on, and Indy starts the fight, doesn't he? Or gets everything going so they can escape. The girl that punches Matt is Spielberg's daughter. Who is also Kate Cap? What's her name? Kate Cap- Kate Capshaw. Kate Capshaw's daughter as well. So yeah, bit of a bit of a nod to another indie sort of link. Yeah. Well, and also pretty obvious. You see the arc when they're when they're running past or yeah. driving past on you. Come on, favorite scenes. What people got? The action at the start for me. J- just the um, yeah. The, from from the. Yeah, uh, well, to be honest, but I'd I'd say all the action s- sequences I, I find are quite good. Like, like in partic- in particular, the the shot where you see him, you, you see him climbing up the boxes, he's running across it, and then he you know throws the whip out, and then then um, you know misses the car, but then goes into the truck at yeah. the start. Uh, yeah, I like that, and um, and that whole fight sequence I thought was funny. Yeah, I I'm going to say you know I think the opening quarter of an hour is as enjoyable as every other Indiana Jones opening. I th- I think it's a very, very strong opening section to a film. It's got that formula right, though, isn't it? Where you see Indy in, you know, some tomb somewhere, whatever he's doing, doing what he's doing. Yeah. There's a bit of peril, blah, blah, blah. There's fighting that he escapes, and then you get him in the college. And that's sort of similar to not... Temple of Doom, but it's similar to the others. Yeah, the the one and one and three. So um, yeah, I, I love that aspect anyway as well. Oh, also the opening is a nice little twist as well because he's already been kidnapped. You don't see them kidnapping him. This Indiana Jones has already been kidnapped. So off the off the front or off from the start, you're just like, oh, okay, this is a little bit different. But then as the section progresses, it is true Indiana Jones. Yeah, and I, I personally, when even when I first watched it, I loved the nuclear detonation part. I th- I found that really entertaining. I loved it the first time round. No, what really bugs me about it now. He would never survive. Be it, it's not so much the room. It's not so much being in the fridge, fridge. And, and the explosion. Yeah. It's how far he gets thrown. I know, yeah. Mm. <laughs> and, the, and, and, how it, and he just sort of like gets or just dress, you know, brushes yeah, himself off. So there's two, there's two bits in it. It's like he would have had several broken bones. So if you wanted to play, <laughs> if you wanted to play it true, like if you're saying he is surviving in that fridge, he would have had several broken bones. The only the only thing that really really bugs me about that opening sequence is is it are they gerbils or oh, what animal? Oh, the gophers, yeah, gophers. yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't handle those. But I, that, I to me, that, I, is, that is not Spielberg. That's Lucas. I made a note of that, right? Because that's very similar in my head to Great Outdoors raccoons. You know the cutaway <laughs> scenes to sort of them, and I know you sort of hate that aspect of that film as well. <laughs> yeah. But I know you mean it's a little bit too comedic. It, it yeah. wasn't necessarily needed, yeah. and it also humanised them a little bit too much. The gophers, mm. for Christ's sake. I know, and I think that's another little sort of element that doesn't, it kind of makes it not feel like a proper indie film. Yeah, no, I know what you mean. I, uh, Ev, what have you got for a favourite scene? 
You just I, said the opening. Oh, I I, said, yeah, the opening. Yeah, well, sorry, and, um, you, I mean. Oh, mine's the same. Oh, is it? Yeah. I'm not going to necessarily disagree. I, and I don't think I've I've got another scene. I, I, I'm, I just love, I did really enjoy that opening. You know, so much happens. And it's, it's not so much a scene, I suppose it's the first section of the film. Mm. And it, it just reminds you, I think, of Indiana Jones. Yeah, the other scene I really enjoyed was the uh, when they're in the Peru cemetery. Ah, uh, yeah. I really like that section when they, because to me that's Indiana Jones when they like you know finding secret doors and passageways and and there's booby they, traps and things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and there's they're discovering things that might not have been discovered before or have been forgotten about. That I really enjoy that ten minute section. What comes after it, though, you know, we'll talk about in a minute. Um, before we go on to changes, do you know that um, who's the guy who wrote Signs or directed Signs? Shalomala Ding Dong. Yeah, yeah. He um, he was involved with writing part of the script to begin with. Really? But um, he, he left because he, he supposedly felt it was too daunting to work with Lucas, Spielberg and Ford. And I think the pressure of just working on an indie film, and there would have been huge pressure. You know, this a film hadn't come out in twenty odd years. No. So to 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 then have to you know try and pull that together, I I sort of understand it. Also, I can imagine for someone like him. Well, I'm imagining it because you said he pulled out of it. He's probably thinking, I know what I do. I'm familiar with what I do, and if. If he's got any nerves or apprehension about doing something different, then I think he's probably right not to do it. Because he wasn't on, he wasn't having, hadn't he just done the happening? Yeah, I don't know. I was trying to picture when it was. He definitely had done signs and things, hadn't he? Yeah, but I'm pretty sure the happening or Lady in the Water had come out. And I'm pretty sure his last two, couple of films had been disappointing. Yeah, I don't know. Come on, and shall we move on to changes and I'll jump straight in right um so like I said I've mellowed on a few things <clears throat> apart from two aspects the CGI in the jungle scene that the, the ta- I, I I wrote in my notes as like the Tarzan monkey swinging scene I I again I didn't get it don't understand why they had to try and bring in some of that humor yeah. to unhumanize the monkeys it's uh, I, 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 yeah, I, I didn't get it. I, I, it, it, it could have been a whole section that wasn't needed. But it's not only that; it's the use of. I'm assuming it's green screen when they're in the vehicles, traveling yeah. side by side. Yeah. It, 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 for me, it just doesn't work. It doesn't work at all. So I'm going to piggyback off the back of you. Um, I don't like that particular action sequence as a whole. I think some of the elements are quite nice. I I don't mind the, you know, fight. I, I quite like the sword fight, the jousting between the vehicles, but I hate the monkeys. I can't stand them. I can't stand Shia LaBeouf swinging through the trees like Tarzan. It's, it's preposterous. How is he supposed to catch up with those vehicles? Yeah. Swinging through the trees. It's rubbish. Well, I there's a like number to... of aspects, right? The... Or, you know, they've got that machine that clears the road to begin with. Yeah. That, that machine gets blown up in the in the beginning of that sequence. And then all of a yeah. sudden, they got all these clear roads. <laughs> yeah. This is where yeah. that come from. Yeah. Uh, and also, we've talked about this previously, uh, and I, and you agree with me on this, Prog. Just break. Just stop the car. Yeah. Everyone else goes forward. Just break. It's just come on. <laughs> the other thing that winds me up as well is right. Do you know Mac Ray Winston? Yeah. Right. I don't mind Ray Winston uh being in it. I, I like Ray Winston as an actor. Uh I don't the character is okay. I think it could have been really interesting. My problem is how does he know Indy's in Peru? Indy and his son turn up in Peru. And they go to the 
to to the 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 mental hospital or sanitarium or wherever that guy was being kept. Oxley yeah. was being kept, and Ray Mac is just outside the gates waiting for him. Now, if if they had said somewhere in the maybe I missed it. If they'd said somewhere in the film, oh, that's where we thought you'd be because they already had Oxley, didn't they? So maybe they knew Oxley had been there. Yeah, I, uh, but if they, if they knew Oxley, if they knew Oxley had been there, they would have they would have gone themselves to the cell and seen all the stuff in the cell, wouldn't they? Well, yeah, I I assumed that they had taken Oxley from the cell. So, yeah, that's a good point. I I, I must have missed it as well if they'd set, mentioned anything. Yeah, I just didn't get how Ray Winston knew where he was. I I, I mean, if I'm supposed to just jump to the conclusion that because they had Oxley. Ray Winston knew that or took a chance that Indiana Jones would be there. I would rather it have been a couple of Soviet agents were like hanging around that area on the off chance and then they radioed it in or something, you know, told, yeah. told the contact that they were there. Yeah, the, sorry, Ev, I, I'll let you go in a minute. I got, no, no, one go more. I got another thing. Shyla both. I am got an issue with him. I used to have a problem with his character in the when I first watched the film, but I actually don't mind him being Indy's son. I like that they brought Marion Ravenwood back because I think um uh sorry, what's the name? I think Karen, Karen Allen. Allen. I think Karen Allen's great as Marion. What I don't like is how ham fisted getting them back together is. And and the marriage like, at the end, yeah. I don't. I that to me that doesn't sit well. I don't mind having her back in the film, but like I I didn't mind the way they engineered her telling him that Sh- uh, Shia LaBeouf was his son because they think they're gonna die in that quicksand, isn't it? So I don't mind that element, but the way that they're all over each other straight away is just to me. I was just like, oh no, they needed to have another pass to that script. To take some of that stuff out or change it because it was just too, it's just too on the nose. So, so originally I hated Matt as a character, and I'm not that fond of it now. I'll be honest. I'm even less fond that it's his son. Right. For me, I would have played more the fact that he was thinking, it could he be my son? Until later in the film. They play in it, they play in it, they play in it, and then Marion turns around and says, No, he's not your son. And there's a bit of a oh, thank God for that scenario. <laughs> um <laughs> but what a more a Maury moment. Yeah, yeah. You I, are um, not the father. <laughs> I just <laughs> and, I, I, and, in, I, and India George turns the camera and goes, and thank for that. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think it's more the case of all I don't like Shia LaBeouf in this film, Frank LaBeouf. He's um yeah he's... he's I will say I've seen him in several films the last few years and he has turned into a very good actor. Hey, I, when I was a kid, I used to watch Even Stevens. I quite liked him in that, but um I have never heard of that at all. Is, wow. Do you remember? I can't believe that reference just came out there. <laughs> <laughs> Only because I used to really fancy the girl who played his sister. All oh, right, okay. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to Google this. It's now. um kids TV. Sort of sitcom sort of thing. Yeah. But um, I'm not a fan of him anyway. But Ev, what have you got? Mindful of time. Um, oh, yeah. Um, the fridge don't work for me. It's just no, it's just too ridiculous. It's almost like it's like the Pierce Brosnan golden eye effect. You, you know, the you know, the bit of the bit of the start where he where he drives the motorbike off the cliff and then he, you know, plummets down and gets in the plane and flies away. Yeah, it's too too much for me. Can um, I ask a, a question about that sequence quickly? Why do they have the TV and and the hose running in that fake town? Yeah. There's no one around and they have a TV on and they have a hose going on. So someone's gone around and turned all that on because it gets obliterated. It's not like it's a, let's see how it affects the TV afterwards. It's gone. Yeah. So anyway, there's my there's my gripe. Maybe that's um, why they left it on <laughs> to see what would happen. Yeah, yeah, but the, <laughs> unless they didn't expect that entire thing just to be like it is, I don't know. But well, it, it, the explosion is 
it's not the same as the atom bomb, is it? It's a different bomb. Isn't that pre- an atom bomb and not a nuclear bomb? I don't really no, the know. One, the one in 57 is a nuclear detonation. I'm sure the one they dro- they used it before and during the war. Ah, oh, right, atom, atom bomb. Yeah. Okay, it makes sense. And that, well, that's why he's in a lead lined fridge as well, isn't it, to stop the radiation? Yeah. yeah. What, what else have you got, Ev? Um, just, I, I don't know. I think it, the the whole alien thing was a bit, it's, it's still a, a little too far fetched for us. It's, I, I, I could I could have got on board with like with a religious type of thing, but I I, I don't know. It's how were you with the new film, Ev? Have you seen it? No, I I, I haven't, but I know oh. kind of what it's about. So yeah. I, without going into too much detail or spoilers, how did the new plot oh. device? Hit? Um, not that great, to be honest. Um, <laughs> isn't isn't the new film worth watching, Ev? It it is. It's all right, but it it just it it wasn't it wasn't needed. I don't think. And I think, but I, I, it's James Ma, James Mangold direct directed it, and he's done like he did Walk the Line and Logan, which are, are brilliant films. But it would have been ten times better if Spielberg would have done it. I think. Mm-hmm. Um, because of the style and the, and the you know and all that, um, but yeah, I can't. I I, I want to talk about it, but I can't get spoilers away. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's all right. I think if if I'm if I'm nicking like marks from Adam, he would probably he call it a five, maybe a six. He, he gives everything a six. <laughs> uh, oh well, if that's a, if that's the case, he'd probably give this a four and a half. <laughs> four. Yeah. Well, in Adam's case, then that's better than ET. Half a pint better, isn't it? Do you give it a four? I think, he, yeah, I think he bumped ET up a mark after we saw Mac and me, didn't he? <laughs> right, Ev, what else have we got, buddy? That's it. I've got one last scene the snake rope scene in the quicksand. Ah, oh, yeah. I've, I've forgotten how much I hated that scene. It's just like they've bloody shoehorned in the fact that Indy doesn't like snakes and we've got to know it in every film. I know we yeah. do, but it's just... Oh, oh crap. <laughs> yeah, I gotta be honest, I didn't mind that. Oh, it's just, I thought it was it's quite... just preposterous that the only thing he can find... Okay, bear in mind, they're in a bloody jungle. Is a snake, and the th- fact that he thought, oh, I'll throw this snake in to get he him He couldn't on. find a vine or a branch. Yeah, he is. He was, he's yeah. swinging on some in about five minutes' time. But, yeah. Never mind. Yeah. All right then. Going on to our final question: Would you recommend Ev? Oh, no. Oof. Prog. I wouldn't, because I think there are def there are three better indie films. I wouldn't say Temple of Doom is that much better than this personally, but I would say. Hang on, now calm down. What I would that? say. I think the first hour and 10 minutes of Crystal Skull are really, really enjoyable. After that, unfortunately, it starts falling apart. I'm really torn. I don't know. I, oh, I, there I he want is. to recommend it, but I want to recommend it at the end. You know, say, watch all the other indies first, then this one. But Mr. I don't, Fences is back. Yeah. 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 But I, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I can't. I can't. I don't think I can. I can't recommend it. So. Okay. Right. On that note, podcasts come out every week. Check us out on YouTube. Um, if you want us to do a film in the future, just let us know and hit us up on whatever you follow us on. Cheers, all.